Now we're going to move on to Overlord. Now this is a game that IGN, GameSpot, and a few other companies really just drilled the shit out of. You see Overlord box art right there. And uh, I actually yeah. enjoyed the demo. Uh, it was one of those, uh, the demo, I was all over that right, demo. I, I enjoyed how much the I demo. It. So let's find out if Force gives it the sixes and the fives that we've been seeing from some of the other review outlets. Force. You know, and I don't know, should I tell what I think about it first or tell why IGN? I think you should start with why IGN because I think what you told me this morning was very, very relevant. Well, I I was really pissed because IGN gave the game a six or like a 6.5, and I'm like, this game is not a six. So I go to IGN. I have to investigate this, and I'm reading the article, and the game crashed on the guy who was playing it. And he lost a bunch of hours now, playing it. And it he like said, just froze or he said what happened was it messed up his save game and he lost ten hours of gameplay. Oh. And he said the game is broken, the game sucks, it's a piece of crap because it wasn't QA tested. Okay? I want people to know that this is coming from someone who played it. I, I you could choose good or evil. I chose evil, did one hundred percent evil, did every single side quest, unlocked every minion, beat every boss in the dungeon. I did it all. Never crashed once, never had any problems, any glitches. So, so it could have been that this guy's 360 sucked bunk ass. At, he got a like, bunk copy. You know, I don't know what happened. Dude, but for him I know what happened. Review. He fucking didn't follow the rules. There's a reason why they put don't remove the memory card or the hard drive yeah. while it's saving. And this motherfucker was probably like, oh, let's see what happens when I do Oh, six. The fucking thing crashed on me. Yeah, that, exactly. And it's I, it I would bums me out that he I, I would so think much. that someone from IGN would totally do something like and, that. And, and I've seen it because I saw uh, several magazines were giving it nines and eights. Yeah. I'm like, how did this? How is this so different than everyone else's? So this guy got the one bad copy. Don't go by what IGN said. All right, I want to start off with graphics. I think graphics in this game are hot. I gave graphics. Um, if you want to pop up those screens, I gave graphics an eight point five. I really like. Here, the way it works is you're this you're this overlord. You know we've kind of talked about, and you have these minions that you send out to do tasks, and um, as you level up, you get new spells, and your minion army grows, and you have different minions, different colors that do different right, things. Right, right. So um, the way it works is that as you level up, you know browns can attack, blues can go through water, reds do fire, um, and then they have they have one more batch. But um, I thought the graphics were hot. You know the world looks unbelievable. A lot of people say the artwork looks like Fable. I think it's leagues above Fable. You know, it looks nice. Everything has this nice polish to it. Each environment that you go into kind of feels like Wait, a new how environment. how is it like Fable? Is it an actual open world RPG? No, it, people it, are saying the graphics look like Fable. And it's third person running around, you know, so it, it looks like It looks like, it looks Fable, like on Fable Xbox is what people are saying? Is what the way they're comparing the art style. Uh, the art, um, yeah. And like the way the characters kind of look cartoony. Their heads are a little bit bigger and they right. kind of look funny looking. Right. Um, but I think this, this game is way above Fable. Um Graphics, I gave an 8.5 to. I really liked them. I thought they were really hot. Um, one of the uh, problems that I have is the next category of sound. Sound, I gave a 7. And one of the reasons why I gave sound a 7 is I like the voices. I like how they stay in the period. And they're not that bad. But the problem is they repeat themselves. A lot. And you go through Ding. a city, and you every time you run by the same guy, he says the same shit. You know, it's funny the first time. But you'll get irritated hearing the same thing over and over. And a lot of your goblins make repetitive noises. Right. So I really liked what I heard the first time I heard it. By the 50th time, it kind of wears on you. So I gave Sound of Seven. All their actors and stuff are pretty top-notch. Sound effects are pretty top-notch. A lot of chaos going on on the screen. And you can hear it all. But um, like I said, the sound gets kind of repetitive. Um, gameplay, this is where I think that this game really shines. And I'm so happy that this game exists because... I love a first-person shooter. I love an RPG, but sometimes I just want something different. You know, right, I just want right. a change of pace. And this game was perfect during the summer. It is a nice change of pace. Gameplay for me got a 9 because it's unique. I haven't played like this before where I'm really not the main guy doing most of this shit. I'm sending it's around an minions. army to right. tear around stuff. And Hence the name. Did you, did you already go to this, but do you control the minions directly? Like how Your does right work? stick is full. You only control your guy with the left stick. Right stick is full minion control. So the right stick moves them everywhere, and as you move them into sections, they automatically start doing their right, shit. If you right. move them onto an enemy, they attack them, start grabbing them. If you move them into a city, they automatically start tearing up shit. Um, so anything you wave them into, what they do is they call it sweeping. You know, sweeping right. your army. And Look at all those You really get into it. Them. And by the end of the game, you have an Holy army of, shit. like, 50 creatures. And when you spawn them out, you can spawn, like, 15 blues, 15 yellows, 10 greens. Right. You know, just have a whole army that just devastates shit. And what I really like, a lot of people complained about 
getting lost in this game. And I really didn't get lost because you kind of knew I've explored this area and gotten this. because a lot of people are fucking used to a map that's just right there that's like a big says, green this, arrow next. that's like, win go button. this way. But I want know, that win button. You, yeah, you know what exactly. sucks, though, is that Thanks no one mentions the fact you have a quest log that tells you what all your quests are. But here's the way it works is you'll be doing a quest and you can only get halfway through that quest before you have to leave it and go to a whole nother quest and do half of that and then go back to that one. So they uh. play off each other. So it's like... One giant world, you don't just go into a world and beat it the first time you enter. Right, right. You know, you'll explore it and only get so far and then have to come back to it. So a lot of people get lost in that, but I always knew kind of what I had to do next. And um, so, But I gave graphics a nine. It is so clever the way that you have to use these creatures to um, – you have to use these blues to get to this certain part, and they will open up something where you can send in your browns. Or, you know, this section can only be passed if you have guys that can walk on fire, and they'll open up stuff for the rest of the world. And it never really got old to me. Sending this giant army through it, I, I loved. Um, and this comes to the last part of my score, and that is the fun cycle. Fun cycle, I gave an eight. I really had a lot of fun with it. You have this epic uh, um, single-player story. You right. Know? But when you beat it, the way it works is that as you're beating it, you have a castle. You start off in just this rundown. You actually see it in the demo, that rundown piece of shit. By the end of the game, it's this giant castle with giant statues, and you have women and wives and... You decorate the hell out of it, and you have a dungeon. And in your dungeon, you can fight every creature you've ever fought. So as you fight, guys, what you do is you get souls. And the more souls right, you have, allow right. you to summon to them. So, like, anytime you are lacking something, you can go into your dungeon and fight them. And I fought all the monsters. I had that. And then what else you can do is you can go online, and you can co-op. And what it is it's survival co-op? But there's actually, like, a puzzle. You guys each have to send your minions in and build stuff and open up gates and then Get to this object, and this object will let you spawn more minions, and then you can last longer, and they keep sending monsters after you. So I really liked co-op. It only has one or two maps, so it won't last long, but I'm not bored with it yet. And then what they also have is they have a mode called Pillage, where you got you are spawned on one side of the map, and your buddy spawned on the other side of the map, and you guys destroy as much of the village that, as you can and steal shit fun. from that each sounds... other. Like, you'll see him carrying this big and gold whoever loot, has the most at the end. and you waste him and steal it, and then they that, also have... That actually sounds pretty hot, actually. And then they have, like, a deathmatch mode where you guys each try and kill each other and stuff. And um, the modes are pretty fun. Like, I really had a lot of fun with it. Like I said, each mode only comes with two maps. I could see more downloadable in the future. I don't know if I'd pay for them, but I'd play the hell out of them if they were for free. But you get a lot of... I wouldn't expect a game like this to have multiplayer in the first place. And the fact that it does it, it's pretty decent. I really like. Um, overall score for uh, Overlord, I gave an 82%. This game hit at a perfect time during the summer where there really wasn't shit to do. Right. And I was ready for something new. And um, I really liked what I played. I'm going to go back and do it, try and get some more achievements. I really want to play the multiplayer survival. I got a couple buddies lined up. Hopefully that when I get back, we'll be doing it. You said you played some with Bubba Fett, right? Yeah, I did. And I played with actually a couple of other listeners. I played each of the modes at least once and got, you know, had to get my achievement for it. But there's more to unlock as you play. Um, I was really happy with it, really so, happy with my purchase. Uh, so definitely one that you would suggest to people to go out and buy. You know, it, it's almost worth the purchase because you get all of that extra content. And it takes you – it took me several days to beat it. The game is a lot bigger than I thought Bruce, it was going to be. Have you ever played Pikmin? You know what? I read a review where someone said it was very similar to that. Right. I never played it. Well, the people in, in, in Stickham are getting all huffy and puffy saying it's Pikmin. Pikmin, Pikmin. That's what I heard because you. <laughs> I, I've seen the photos where you have different colored Pikmin, but I've never played you it, You know guys. what? Hold on. Fuck you, Stick'em users. It is not fucking Pikmin. I don't care if it's got the same fucking goddamn gameplay. In Pikmin, you are a fucking bunch of, like, mutated animals. Yeah, right? whatever. A little... And aren't you good guys? Not to mention that that's a piece of shit Nintendo game, and in this one, you are fucking pillaging villages, yes, this is okay? Not, this is not a Nintendo game. I mean, God. You're tearing up shit. It's like fucking comparing Mario Kart to Forza 2, you fucking you jackasses. You got bitch. And yeah, we just want to say all of our uh, I listeners I mean, come suck. on. I... I, I don't know who exactly was saying it, but give me a break. All right, well, uh, let's a move on. And stuff. Hey, 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 Suma. Mario Kart's just like Forza 2. They're practically the same fuck game, dog. Pretty much. You fucking driving them, okay? Hey, sure, hey, there's a banana use, in Forza. You can use Forza. that new Wii, Wii controller, steering wheel, made for children. It's not this big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, it's the not donut. this big, guys. It is. It's, it is, it it is ja- it's like perfect for James. <laughs> Mini wheat. Yeah. yeah James is going to break not. that fucking thing and then laugh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, eat it, <laughs> shit it out later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should do some stress tests.